boy, oh boy, ain't the beer cold. Ain't the bows cold in the land of pleasant living. We're going to get a little... Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> the Baltimore Orioles, the cardiac kids take down the Kansas City Royals 4-3 to three to take Eric their second series of the win, stealing victory out of the jaws of defeat. James McCann, walk off. Blast, 110 off the bat. Jordan Westberg does it two games ago. The Orioles, Eric, had no business doing what they did tonight, mm -mm. but they did the damn thing. How are we feeling? Uh, roller coaster of emotions. I mean, that the first seven innings of that game were, and like, I'm not saying this is like an exaggeration. It was like one of the more pathetic showings that we've seen. Like, couple that with, I mean, this game should have been over five hours ago legitimately the game should have started at one there was the massive rain delay five hours or whatever it was and and again it looked like they were sleepwalking through the the through the entire first seven innings and uh, you know i mean the umpire say what you want about the umpire i thought he was squeezing uh burns in the first and that seemed to kind of get him a little fired up and and going but they were i mean he wasn't missing any bats at all what do you have three strikeouts i think um nine hits i i believe he had two and he, he didn't look like himself, but I know we were talking about in the group chat. He got it. I mean, they gutted it out and he, that's the thing with Corbin Burns, like a, a start like that. I think he had 39 pitches through like two innings and it's like, this could get ugly. He did, I think he had 59 through three with seven hits. And yeah. And you're one, like one strikeout, something along those lines. Through and three you're innings. like, this could get, you know, we could get into the bullpen very early here. It doesn't matter because they have the off day tomorrow, but like this could turn into, we need every arm in the bullpen. And what he was able to do was hold it together. Again, he only hit, he held him to the two runs, which is fantastic, and that's what those guys do. They will hold you down like that. And even if he didn't have his best stuff, he's keeping you in the game, and that is exactly what the Orioles needed because, again, they – I mean, they, they might as well not have bats up there uh, the first seven innings. I mean, nobody looked interested. Um, it kind of started with, shocker, Colton Kowser. You know, it started with him coming in and getting the hit. That's all he seems to do now. Um, Adley had a, you know, Adley's just on base every single time. It seems like, um, again, no business winning this game, but, but this is kind of, this is a game that good teams win. They find a way to win and they gut it out. And I mean, all the credit in the world to, to Kansas city over there, that pitcher is. I and and Cole Reagan's, I, I think, uh, mm -hmm. the locked on Orioles account tweeted and said, uh, casual is finding out about Cole Reagan said he was AL pitcher of the month in mm -hmm. August. The first, uh, I believe that Jim Palmer said the first Royals pitcher of the month in the AL Vince since Wright. Zach Greinke 14 yeah. years ago. Yeah. 14 years. So Reagan's obviously off to a hot start there. He's he awesome. has velocity. That changeup he threw Anthony Santander uh, with runners on in a two strike, you know, deep into the count there and got Tony out ahead of it up and over the middle of the plate. That action is devastating. The the combination of the slider and the changeup he had. You know, the, the Royals, a team that I talked about, we did the season preview, uh, mm -hmm. did it on press box. A team I, I think makes the playoffs this year. And I think we saw that scrappiness. Michael Garcia going yard in all three games. His speed was devastating to the Orioles to mm -hmm. the point where uh they, they were afraid to walk yeah. him. It felt like in in his last at bat or second to last at bat, he ends up getting on base, you know, again because he's an unbelievable base dealer. He's a great defender. He is also uh, able to nub one off of a curveball and get on first at one point in this game, too. So he's been awesome. Uh, a really, really, really exciting finish to a really crappy, sloppy start. I mean, it is cold here. If you're not in Baltimore, it is. And you can see on Mass and the humidity, the moisture coming out of their breath. It's freezing here. It's cold. It's rainy. They had a five-hour delay there. Uh, one of my favorite parts was that they didn't, especially with, like, this sounds stupid maybe in August, but when you just got the shiny new toy of, of Corbin Burns, not wasting one of his starts, mm -hmm. like especially where he does only let up two runs. One of that is in part to like Mateo, of course, the ball will always find you immediately. What was that? The second at bat of the game uh, has a, a, an awkward play. Not an awkward play, but like Tough not play. a routine. Play. Yeah. yeah, definitely not routine by any by any means. So It is. And we have Eric here in the comments uh, who said the Royals are, are – a good team. He said they're a lot better and their speed exposed those. It definitely did. And I know Eric, you said, Hey, maybe they wanted to get, you know, McCann in there. Who's got the bazooka. They always like to talk about his arm and he still couldn't hold the Royals runners there. So mm -hmm. uh, man, the, the chutzpah, the cojones it took in this game 
to pull themselves out of that miserable, wet, long day was just really impressive. We had a comment here as well that sums it up perfectly uh, that good teams, I forget who said it, good teams have a fight. We have Baltimore Sports Providence. Honestly, it was, oh, that was the wrong one. Whoops, we'll get to that <laughs> one, baby. Uh, he said good teams find a way to win, right? And a lot of pessimism, I get it. We can talk about Ramon Arias and Austin Hayes. And, uh, you know, I know people have been critical of Cedric Mullins and, of course, Tony Kemp and things like that. But, man, uh, clutch factor, unbelievable. Adley Rushman also hits a double in this game. I think that was in the third or fourth inning to get out of being no hit mm -hmm. uh, and then gets on base again late. Hit, ends up driving in a run. That play that Hunter Renfro made to – Wit, which is hilarious because if you remember to start last year, Adley got thrown out, I think, three times uh, trying to get to second in the first 10 games and then kind of pumped the brakes a little bit. But mm -hmm. that was just an unbelievable throw. Renfro has a hose. Wit with a really athletic and, and quick coordinated tag there. So, uh, man, this just feels like borrowed wins that, you know, is going to elevate and something to build off of as they go hopefully play this – or they go play this Pittsburgh team that uh, has been off to a hot start, has a ton of talent as well. So – uh, man, this just is nuts, 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 nuts to watch. Yeah. Yeah. And again, you said it, I mean, the speed it's, it's, it's something that we're going to, I mean, we saw it all last year. Guys were running every time Cano was in and Bautista, and now it's going to happen with Kimbrell. It's going to happen with Burns. It's going to, and it seems, I mean, if you're picking up the pattern, it's, I mean, it's, it's the big guys. And obviously it takes them a long time to get ready and throw the pitch in. I mean, the, the guys are getting great reads off them. It's so it's not so much the arm strength of Adley or McCann, but it's just more how big those guys are and how long it takes them to deliver home. So again, late innings, that's going to be a thing, but yeah, you could tell, I mean, they were, they looked legitimately terrified to let any of those Royals on. And I don't even think we've said his name. Bobby Witt Jr. Is awesome. He is, he's so good. And, and we've had conversations in the tag in the, the text chat and all that. He may be a top five, 10 player in baseball. He, he may be top 10 already top five by the end of the season. I mean, he, yeah. And, and you said, you know, there's going to be those conversations about, you know, who, who deserved to go one overall and all that kind of stuff. You know, people are going to go crazy with that wit off the probably the second hottest start in baseball behind Mookie mm -hmm. Betts and, and wit also flashing the leather the way he does. I uh, had an unbelievable diving play to get a runner at second. I can't remember who hit that one, but uh, had a really nice play late. So he's just flashing all over the place and, making it tough. So this, the speed, the athleticism, the, I mean, truly a five tool player mm -hmm. that go ahead and place a wager on AL MVP on Bobby Witt. I mean, he looks the part and he's doing it on both sides. His war is going to be outstanding and the MVP mm -hmm. has turned into a little bit of a war award there. So yeah, yeah. man, this Royals team is fun to watch, but they also do it in that <laughs> demonic small ball way that drives you fucking nuts still. And that has Orioles fans, uh, getting PTSD from years prior and series prior and the ALCS and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, man, it was fun to watch. MJ Melendez, a guy who had really con solid contact throughout this series as well. Uh, Salvador Perez was a nightmare for the Orioles in this series. It felt like event. it did get to the point, and then I had to catch myself because I'm like, stop pitching to this guy. He is smoking you every single time you have a he has a runner on. And I was like, eh, it's Corbin Burns. He's not pitching around guys like that. He's he's trying to get guys out. So, uh, man, exciting finish to a series where you you saw the potential of the rate of the Royals yeah and again I mean they're they're they can make some noise in that in that division I know you said you think they're going to make the playoffs I wouldn't be shocked again they they have the pieces um again they've spent the money they've, they've already locked up their their mega superstar shortstop so good for them um again good things are going to come for the Royals um I'm just tired of them get them out of my face I don't ever want to see them back in Baltimore again I called them in 2014 I remember this being like oh they're cicadas like they come out every 17 years and then they dive back into their hole and now I'm like ah shit I think they're back again so I'm not not thrilled with that but uh Again, I mean, four and two Orioles go into this um, this road trip uh, going up to Pittsburgh. Not like, technically it is a road trip, but it's a, it's only to Pittsburgh. And then I forget where they go after that. Uh, Boston, I believe. But um, yeah, you know, they I mean, th this was a game they had no series, no business winning. This was a series they really had no business winning. They they easily could have been swept or, you know, just just gone. Yeah, like I that. mean, yeah, it was, it was, it was two, ninth and... inning, two ninth inning, you know, performances mm -hmm. easily could have gone to extras easily could have not been there on Monday night. Uh, Jordan Westbrook saying he hit his first career kind of walk off, mm -hmm. I guess, in, in college or, or in the minors. I mean, I'm sure the guy probably had something in high school or junior high freaking club. He said uh, no. He said no. Gaithersburg Giant, too. Jordan Westberg. Fun fact. Gaithersburg Giant. 
Yeah. Uh, we had a comment here. The bullpen looked really strong for the Orioles throughout this series. We <laughs> see, I believe, in the on Monday night, Dean Kramer – uh, lets mm -hmm. up three runs early. The Orioles are struggling to get through the first time through the the order. Uh, really, this entire year, aside from Grayson Rodriguez, I think every single start has had at least one run given up in the first time through the the batting order. Keegan Aiken comes in, 1.1 innings, lets up one hit. Yenier Cano, someone that we definitely need to talk about tonight, looked electric. The movement looked like prime Cano to start the year last year. Mm -hmm. uh, Craig Kimbrell has, you know, a little bit of a dink and dunk Royals devil you know, it's the same same issue that I feel like that's what really brings out the the not being able to hold runners issue. That was a problem with Bautista last year. It's a problem with Kimbrel. Kind of happens with with closers a lot of the time. They they don't like to break their stride. Then I think in game two, we end up seeing Dylan Tate throw some nasty. Brian Brian was talking about that in the group text, throwing some nasty front door curveballs that mm -hmm. just feel like you have to try to time up so well. We see Dylan Tate come in. One inning, one hit allowed. Jacob Webb comes in, a, a blank inning. And then Jonathan Easley comes in, two strikeouts. And, and I think that, that was his Orioles debut, if I'm not mistaken. And, mm -hmm. yeah, it goes two innings there. And then, obviously, tonight we we see a really strong performance from guys like Cano, from James MacArthur. Uh, or, excuse me, that is on the wrong side there, wrong scoreboard. Mike Bauman gets, lets up a solo shot to Michael Garcia there, who, you know, was able to bounce back. You don't love it from Bauman, but you kind of live with that. We, we've seen him so often. Danny Coulomb throwing disgusting, filthy, nasty sliders to lefties that start on the inside part of the plate and finish two feet off the plate. And then, like we said, Cano comes back in again and, and shuts shit down. So uh, Orioles bullpen, really, really, really strong series, and that's definitely a bright star from a, a series that could have gotten away from him. Yeah, again, I mean, they 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 kind of, them with Burns, kept them in the game. Again, I mean, you limit them to the two or three runs, obviously it's never out of reach. Um, again, it looked bleak, but all you need kind of need is is that Royals bloop and, a, you know, bloop and a blast kind of thing, a bloop and, and then, you know, another hit, another hit here. Um, I get why they did it. I know why the Royals did it. But intentionally walking Austin Hayes is one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. That's, I mean, that guy has not hit a ball hard since August last year. And and they intentionally put him on again to face Cowser, lefty on lefty, ends up striking out, so it worked out. But man, that's <sighs> playing. And I remember um, Schneider did it against uh, uh, the, with the Blue Jays last year. He walked Hayes to get the gunner, and then Gunner hit a home run, lefty on lefty. So again, I know the numbers always say you know do this, it works out. But it, that's where it's like if you're a Royals fan, it's like dude, you gotta just do the eye test. I mean, Hayes was not going to do anything there, I don't believe. But again, the Hayes Mateo. Ramon conversation is one. I don't think we'll talk about it tonight. We can have we can have a lot. Yeah, of I mean, fun we, we, we can we can get into it, but I just uh, it, it felt you know. And Brian, we'll shout out Brian. Brian was like, "The Orioles are going to win this game." I said, "Yes, yeah. I think so too." Yeah, able yeah. to get to MacArthur for two. Able to get to Smith there, and it, it did feel ridiculous. And the the Royals did have right handed arms that they could have gone to, but then again, maybe then that spurns Ryan O'Hearn to come in. You know, so it might have mm -hmm. been a, a futile move in the end. They wanted to go with Will Smith, so. Uh, able to get through there. The Royals looks like their Achilles heel right now is definitely their bullpen who, when the pressure was on, was not able to go get outs uh, for sure. But wanted to talk about, you know, our, our hoping to get sponsored segment here by by a, a business that uh, we've, we've maybe been in touch with a little bit. But we're going to go three dogs of the series. I mean, it's 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 hard to not put two of these guys in here. But Eric, who who's your first dog of the series when you think back over the last couple of days? I'll go. I'll go. Jordan Westberg, my number one dog, just for the walk off. Um, again, he kind of he he had some really good at bats when it didn't seem like anybody else really was. There's another guy that I'm thinking of, um, but Westberg I think has to just with the late inning heroics, straight up winning that game the other night. Um, I he he has to again after we talked about him all day on opening day, just him being a bulldog and and just born to be a baseball player. So I gotta go. Uh, I gotta go Westy for that one. 100%. Uh, second dog of the series. I'll, I'll throw it to Jimmy McCann. I mean, those are wins. Those are walk-offs. His uh, win probability was like 82% on that hit. He's, I mean, he fucking smoked that ball. He also had a 382-foot ride that it wasn't a 29 out of 30, but Camden Yards are, but it was probably like a 10 out of 30 if you go check. He smoked that ball, and it felt like it was a, a huge position there. Uh, and I've kind of been shit-talking. Not really James McCann. I love James McCann, but it just feels mm -hmm. like the Orioles are very hapless – in regards when we don't have, you don't, they don't have Adley Rushman behind the dish. It feels like pitching gets a little discombobulated. I feel like you can really feel Adley's impact 
in terms of efficiency for your starters. Um, and yeah, Shepard Snyder here, great bunt. Jordan Westberg and Jim Palmer yeah. made a great point. He was like, that guy's not someone who's probably been bunting at any level. He's been a heart of the order three hitter for years and just a textbook perfect bunt to, to advance the runners there and ends up leading to the walk-off too. So you, I'm going you know it's at Jordan Westberg. Shep has a great point. Again, it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic bunt. Um, shout out to Shep. Love that guy. Um, but that reminds me of the, uh, the O'Hearn bunt from the Roy, the Rays game last year. And, you know, when they ended up winning the division and it, again, it's a guy who has probably not been asked to bunt a lot in his baseball career. And all he did was do it and do it, do it, you know, I mean, it was, it was textbook. He dropped it three feet yeah. in front of the plate, got right down on it. No, they knew it was coming. He looked a little awkward there in the first one. I uh, wasn't able to pull back on a, a pitch that was clearly off the plate and was able to just kind of have the nuts there. So uh, I, I was talking about Jordan Westberg in the preview as my breakout player for the year. I think that's a lot of people too. Uh, so I don't think I'm alone there and we're starting to see it very early. Who would you put as your, your kind of third dog here of, of the series? We can include Royals if you want uh, anything of the sort. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to include the Royals. I want yeah, them. Out the Royals are the devil, man. They really are watching this game was. Yeah. I'm done, uh, done, done with them. Um, I'm torn because I I, I want to go Kowser because again when his number was called he pretty much showed up every time except for that at bat in the ninth but you know he was the only one who hit yesterday um I but I also want to go Corbin you know for again just really sacking up and and st- keeping them in this game but uh, you know again that's what we expect at him so I'll give it to, I'll give it to Colton um th- he had a great day today he you know his Texans traded for Stefan Diggs so we were talking about that earlier and he's he's super excited about that but um and then you know again he he comes in today gets a hit too little I mean I've never seen Q shots like that in in a baseball game uh two of them in the same game so I, I think good good for him so I'll, I'll give it to, to Colton for that one definitely uh the quickly another quick hitting segment to go on the dog catch up of the series for me uh, I'm going Adley Rushman. I think that one's pretty obvious. Uh, mustard for me. Um, probably, I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go Dylan Tate. I think we saw some mustard from Dylan Tate there. Eric, who's your relish of this series to go on the dogs? Relish is not a good thing or it is a good thing? Is relish this- is up to you. Re- you. We talked about relish. We talked about relish. I st- I'll give it to Mountcastle. I think he had such a, a, a really good series uh, defensively, most of all. I mean, he had that, he had a, it's a, couple really really nice diving plays in the first game to save a run and and again obviously hold that lead um he had that play last night where i think it was it was a westberg who made the throw and he kind of he could tell that it was going to short hop him and he bounced back and he you know he ended up being able to catch it stay on the bag and collided with the guy a little bit plus the home run um the other night and he's just he's he's doing what he did last year man he got off to that that good start last year he's hitting the ball super hard too so you can just tell he's locked in too. He yeah, had some good yeah. takes tonight. Takes a four pitch walk uh, late in this one that keeps things going after Adley takes a walk. Just didn't get into aggressive mounty. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go try and win this thing with my bat mode. He was just mm-hmm. went with the flow. He's zoned in. He's locked in. It feels like he's reading pitches really well. He's able to decipher breaking stuff and especially stuff that might be coming from righties away. So uh, Ryan O'Hearn, man, I mean, hell of a hitter. Definitely against, you know, some righties he'll get his at-bats, but I feel like it's really hard to take Mount Castle off the field. So, I mean, people talk about, you know, people shit on those that play defensive first well. It's like, you know, not the biggest deal in the world, but he really is out there making plays, man. I mean, natural shortstop there. So uh, he, he's looked really sharp so far this series. So dogs, ketchup, mustard, and relish of the week uh, of the series, I should say. Love it. So general other thoughts, Eric, what comes through your mind about this series? Things from Twitter, highlights, pitches. Uh, one thing I did want to point out, I thought it was funny, a baseball savant here. Corbin Burns had 13 swing and misses tonight. Cole Riggins had 13 swing and misses tonight. So Burns just wasn't wow. getting them on, uh, on on two strike counts. Uh, so Burns was elusive a little bit. But yeah, the, we had the comment, uh, a lot of people saying, you know, if that is your floor, damn, he's a good pitcher. And most certainly. So uh, what else? what else is cruising through your mind thinking of this series or anything ahead of Pittsburgh? Um, I'm getting word that Kyle Stowers has three home runs tonight. So that's, Oh, he hit a third just now. He just hit a second. Like I feel like 35 minutes ago. And then six minutes ago, I get it. I get an an alert. Uh, Heston Kerstad has another home run tonight, a three run home run. So again, the boys are hitting down there. They're not really hitting up here, but, um, here it is from Jake Rill. This is the fourth time in Orioles history that the team has recorded two walk-off wins within their first six games of the season 2003 2001 1964 so yeah Kyle Stowers did uh 
I think he also just set the record for most home runs by a Norfolk Tide. So not really a record you want to have, but congrats, I guess, <laughs> you know, but that's uh, yeah, that's, that's close, but no cigar of what you want. You're like, oh, yeah. okay. he's a, he's a Norfolk legend. Yeah. So one, um, one last thing too. I mean, people are going to, again, when you go back and you look at the, this, the pictures, the videos with this series, it's it, the attendance is going to look awful. And I know people were kind of ragging on it today. But it's been, br- I mean, brutal weather. And you talked about it all in the text today. Like, I was shocked that they played this game. I know they kind of had to get it in because they, there's no, um, they didn't have an off day tomorrow. The Royals don't. If make- this was a loss, it would have been like the classic, like, why the, people are so, why you the hell did they play this game? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yesterday I was calling for the game to be canceled. I was like, this is, it's unsafe. It's disgusting. It makes me, you know, there's no, they don't care about player safety, yada, yada, yada. But, this, you know, I'm glad they played this game. This is, again, this is a good win that, that I feel like the team needed bad because as down as we were on, on Twitter, I'm sure in the dugout, it was kind of just like, what, what the hell is going on? You know, what, what are we doing here? But again, I, I think you just flush that series. You, you come out of it winners and you head up to Pittsburgh and hopefully uh, can play some, some better baseball, I think in good weather. My cousin was saying it may snow up there. I, I don't, I don't know. So I don't, I got it. We've got a Nebbiolo inspector will travel in the comments from Twitter here saying the bats will come when the weather stops being Scottish nice. winter garbage, which is quite a apropos way of putting it. It has been just a gray shithole in Baltimore. The, the whole last week from even before opening day till now. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's supposed to get a little nicer next week. Those are going on the road. So yeah, once mm-hmm. things even out a little bit, uh, so yeah, tons of fun stuff. We'll we'll get into the the pirates and and have an episode and things like that. But I mean, I think we can have a little bit of discussion here. Kerstad absolutely raking. Stowers absolutely raking. I feel like a, a lot of fans definitely are on Twitter pissed that those guys are playing well and they're they're watching guys like Arias. I said in the text group of uh, just the podcast was like, of course, the guys that everyone was complaining about making the team over other guys was Urias. Hayes, you know, playing over Kowser to start early. And of course, they are just as cold as humanly possible. Um, and I do think it's tough. I mean, the Orioles have a lot of young bats in the lineup. If, if Kowser's playing, that means you've got Gunner, who's in year two. Kowser, who's practically it still has prospect status. Uh, Westberg, who I think has just around 200 at-bats or plate appearances. So then if you, you know, they're, they're going to have to pull these guys up at some point. But if you've got, you know, two or three of those guys from Norfolk in the lineup, Norby, I think, hit another home run tonight, too, if I'm not Mm -hmm. mistaken. Um, I I don't know what the hell to do with him, but it's just a lot of youth and it's a good problem to have. But uh, the the Orioles are making it a little tough on themselves right now. I know fans are frustrated. Uh, What are your general thoughts on on just the the kind of log jams that are occurring at the major league level and the prospects that are chomping at the bit? Yeah, it's again, we've talked about it and everyone's talked about it. My mentions are full of it. You were talking about how every, you know, if you click on any Orioles tweet, everything underneath is just what do you I mean? It was, it was terrible. And I tweeted and said everyone was bitching nonstop for like three hours and then click, they win again on a, on a walk off. It was just nuts. It's, it's, I don't know. I mean, I, I something has to, they're going to have to make a move. And, and I think we know that. Um, uh, you know, I think that the move is to go out and get an arm. You have to. Um, you, you just they, they have way too many guys like we've talked about now again you look at some of the guys down low i mean their their ceilings may never be higher right now kind of norby is he's been tearing the ball the cover off the ball for i don't know over a year now but now is like the time where uh, obviously no one's gonna sell early actually i did see a, a ken rosenthal being like oh the windless marlins why they could start selling sooner rather than later which hey it's like go out go get jesus lazardo you know go get some of those guys down there um, if they, if they're already throwing in the, the towel, like absolutely go get some of them. Connor Norby, enjoy Miami. I'm sure it's wonderful down there. You'll love it. But, um, yeah, I, I just don't know. I truly do not know. You obviously you have to give Austin Hayes, who's notoriously a slow starter more time. And you have to, you have to Mullins is 30, 30 guy, you know, a couple years ago, he has the weapons. We, he was, he was almost a lock to start the all-star game before he got hurt. I mean, the, the range he has in the outfield and mm-hmm. uh, on the base pads, I mean, allow you to live with those slumps. And I mean, it feels like there's not really any other guy in the organization right this second that you're super confident about playing center specifically. Mm -hmm. It's tough there for sure. Yeah. Um, But again, uh, those two guys, again, they're veterans or established veterans. You got to get, I, 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 I'm guilty of it too, but like the, the haze at bat tonight where he was like strike one looking, I think strike two check swing or was it, or strike two looking maybe. It it felt like, you know, of course, 
this is like recency bias or local bias, whatever you would call it. But it, it felt like Chris Davis at bats towards the mm -hmm. end where it's like you're looking in the wrong place. Like you can't even see the ball. I was like, oh, my God. Um, it was it was definitely tough. And yeah. the thing I do like about what's going on, though, I feel like there's a brigade of players. We, people are calling them the Fab Five or Five or this, that, or the other. Those guys, Mayo, Norby, Kerstad, Stowers, and, of course, Jackson Holiday. I feel like they have a FU attitude down there. I feel like they've got a little, like, let's stick it to them by absolutely dominating and make it so that they just are – the Orioles organization, Elias, the front office, are just sweating every day like, oh, my God. And, I mean, people are tagging Michael Elias on Twitter. Who knows how often he goes on, but he's always on his cell phone. I don't know. I feel like he sees this stuff. He might even snicker at it. But uh, I, I like that there might be this, like, dog mentality that there's, like, this – squad that feels like you know a couple of them should have made it and this that and the other so i i feel like they have risen to the occasion and for guys like holiday and cursed at oh well, i was not cursed at he had the heart issue but was it, holiday what his dad said his dad was like you know it's the business side and we'll maybe get them back on the business side later but jackson holiday hasn't had a ton of adversity in his life as, especially as an athlete so you know he's the one one pick he's done nothing but rake and yeah, it's nice to give him a little little edge there, and, and if it's costing you games, that's one thing, but the Orioles have been able to, to get through two series here. So I love this, like, separation going on. I, I hope they're down there, like, let's fucking stick it to them. Like, let's make this so difficult and make them feel so awkward about us being down here and uh, get a little bit of that dog mentality. That's why Norfolk's been cool, right? There's been so much talent there. They'll blow teams out three, four days a week. They'll score freaking 12, 15, 18 runs, whatever the hell goes on. So a uh, ton of ton. We have questions about Holiday here. Uh, the date that I've seen for holidays uh, service time is April 12th, right, Eric? Is that what the the date that's been floating around is, I think? I I believe, and we talked about it on the the um, podcast, the unreleased one that's going to come out, I believe, uh, tomorrow, Friday, or some, one of the days. But it's weird, too, because, like, again, I've seen a couple publications, like Baseball America and I think, like, Fangraphs. They don't, like, they don't have it down, the date down, like, nailed down. They're like, we think it's this day. Which again, to me, it's like if Baseball America and Fangraphs and them are like, we we don't really know. Then we then I, we don't. I'm know. not gonna know. Hell no, right. I can barely tie my shoes. I'm not gonna know anything over them. Like so, but that that's I guess the rumor date. Who was it? Was it Jacob Cal? Was it JCM? Yeah. He tweeted something today and was like, "Here's you know the the five possibilities of when he's gonna come up or something like that." So yeah, I, I don't know. Um, Sometime soon, I believe. Something's got to give, you know, injuries will probably factor into it at some point here. Uh, you know, you don't want, wish for guys to get injured. That's not the case. You you wish that Hayes was hitting, you know, 450 right now and, you know, got a monster clutch hit late, things like that. But a lot of this stuff sends, tends to work itself out. Um, I don't know, man. I, I kind of get this gut feeling Kerstad might be the first one called up. Uh, they called him up last year already, and it feels like he is the most complete professional ready hitter, uh, especially mm -hmm. being a lefty. But we did have a, a comment here. Uh, I've lost it, but it was that when Hayes is struggling, man, it's tough against lefties. It is really tough. You're, you're especially at home too, because then you have your switch hitters and Tony and Adley, you know, having to play to the wall and man, I mean, it's, it's really going against the Orioles philosophy. So I tweeted at one point, you know, maybe when this game goes the other way, I was like, ah, uh, they might be in some trouble against lefties to mm -hmm. in this gauntlet going against it. It was tough tonight. Um, so yeah, Cade Povich yesterday, a comment here, Cade Povich also shove, uh, yesterday, I think he had six shutout innings and like five strikeouts, one walk, maybe one hit, one walk, something like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, baby birds are murking it and they're not so baby anymore. These are like angry, you know, they, they've got their learner's know. permit and they do not want to listen to mom and dad. And if you try to ground them, they are going to tell you to go F yourself and like slam their door shut and say, stay out of my room. So uh, I, I love this juvenile, <laughs> I'm, I'm making this all up, but I like that there's like this little contention down there where they're like. We're going to fucking stick it to them. I love it. So <laughs> if you are listening, we've, we've had 1,200 people with us. Appreciate it. I uh, would love to have you like and subscribe. If you don't watch on YouTube, we would love to have you there. That's how you can easily, easily, easily support us. Uh, we'll be doing these recaps as quickly as we can after every single series conclusion. Again, we think that's a fun way to stay current, something that we can do uh, volume-wise that is attainable. Uh, ED or RDT, you are in your your absolute prime here, Eric. This is just living, man. I mean, James McCann, Jordan Westberg, freaking dogs, man. I can't get over how freaking hard James McCann blistered that ball too. He he, he smokes those balls. balls when he barrels them up. He he hits them it as hard. It feels like the barrel was bad is like the size of a human head when he when mm -hmm. he sees the ball out of a you know, when he feels feels like he's got a read on it. 
you know what else too? The rest of the this whole series, because again, I talked about it, the crowd wasn't the greatest. You could hear the audio was like it sounded like they were hitting in like a wind tunnel, and it was just everything was like it sounded like gunshots. So yeah, that that maybe that had something to do with it too. But that that's what I was noticing. But again, I mean, it's it's Orioles magic. You know what is it? What do they say? Every night there's a different star. That's the Orioles. That's the magic of Orioles baseball. Oh yeah, James McCann, baby. Yes, we McCann. Good for him. Yes, we McCann. Uh, I think that about does it. Orioles about to head to Pittsburgh. Have the day off tomorrow, right? And then Pittsburgh Friday at 3.30. First pitch there. So we appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, would love to have your patronage, your viewership on YouTube if possible. If not, that's cool too. But we appreciate you guys. Orioles walk off for a second time in three days. 4-3 over the Royals to take their second series of the year. And man, oh man, Orioles baseball, it's back, baby. We're getting into oh, getting in the swing of things here. Corbin Burns at two starts. What the hell, man? Life is life is nuts. So thank you guys so much. Hope you have a lovely rest of your evening and go birds. See ya.